The Three Angels Media International, 3AMI, is a Christian media organization that creates multicultural and multiracial value-based inspirational contents and entertainment using innovative technology. We tell and share stories of hope that shape and mold character, challenge our audiences to schedule their priorities, heal, uplift, and restore. 3 AMI will enrich viewers and diverse populations and families through films, series, shows, comedies, romance, thrillers, documentaries, mission stories, music, faith-based sermons, health and lifestyle, and other media presentations etc. to empower Adventist families and the Christian communities around the world to live on purpose while we wait for the second and soon return of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Subscribe to 3AMI at 3AMIFilms.com Subscribe also to 3AMI YouTube channel. Welcome to 3 Angels Media International. Lesson Discussion. What a beautiful moment once again to be with you, to engage in lessons of daily living. I am your host, Pastor John Mwapo. Very excited to share this incredible moment with you, with my amazing wife, Pastor Jane. Welcome again, God's children. Let's study together. Amen. And this evening, we are blessed to have our team members as we discuss together with you. We are privileged to have Elder Babalala with us. We welcome you in Jesus' name. May you be blessed. Amen. And Elder, Elder Babalala came with his amazing wife, Dr. Esther. You are all welcome in the name of the Lord. May you remain blessed. Amen. Today, we are looking at another powerful lesson, taken and tried, taken and tried. This lesson is going to look at the Gethsemane experience of Jesus, uh, the things that happened before the Gethsemane, and the Passover, and the events that led to his crucifixion. Keep an open mind. I'm sure that the Holy Spirit has something to offer you this beautiful lesson. As we go on, we'll sing that song, King of My Life. <laughs> mighty name of Jesus, we've come before you again to continue to study. Lord, we pray that you stay with us, mm -hmm. teach us, give us understanding, and help our viewers at home to be blessed. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The events that took place before Jesus was crucified, the events of the Passover, the events of the betrayal, the trial, is our focus in this wonderful lesson. And from the key test, Mark 14 verse 36 tells us, Dr. Esther, can you help us with that? So the memory text yes. is taken from the Mark, book of Mark 14, 36. Yes. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Amen. Nevertheless, not my will, but, be but done. yours. So even Jesus at this particular point in the history of humanity, in the history of his own life. He didn't just want to do his own will. He relied totally on the will of his father. Father, Pastor Jen, can you help us with the first paragraph of that introductory? Chapters 14 to 16 in Mark are known as the passion narrative because they describe the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. As noted in the lesson we had last week, the last six chapters of Mark cover only about one week. The majority of events in Mark 14 to 16 occur in the later parts of this lesson. And then, and that will be for the Thursday and Friday of the Passion Week. His death will occur on a Friday and his resurrection on Sunday. Amen. The resurrection of Jesus is actually what gives our lives meaning. Without resurrection, everything about the gospel, teaching and preaching, our prayers, our fasting, our going to church, everything would have been meaningless. Our lives itself would have been very meaningless if Jesus' resurrection. Did if Jesus did it, yeah. <laughs> so let us see Mark chapter 14. I want uh, Pastor Jen to read 14, verse 1 through uh, 6. And Dr. Esther, you read uh, 7 to 11. Go ahead. Please. It was now two days before Passover and the festival of a living bread. The leading priests and the teachers of religious law were still looking for an opportunity to capture Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the Passover celebration they agreed or the people may riot. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard. She broke open the jar and poured the perfume over his head. And some of those at the table were indignant. Why waste such expensive perfume? They asked. Could have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor. So they scolded her harshly. But Jesus replied, leave her alone. Why criticize her for doing such a good thing to me? All right. You always have the poor among you. You can help them whenever you want to, but I won't be here much longer. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body ahead of time for being buried. I tell you this in solemn truth. The good news will be preached throughout the world, and this woman's deed will be remembered and praised by all those who hear it. 
Then Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, went to the chief priest. He went there to plan how to turn Jesus over to them. He told the chief priest why he had come. They were excited and happy and promised him a reward. So he began looking for the right time and place to betray Jesus. All right. Two stories. Opposite direction. Actually, three stories here. First place, the chief priest and scribes. These are the church leaders. Yes. These are the people that should honor God in the highest in quotes, that should show the light. These are the people that has been entrusted to the leadership of God's business on earth. Yes. If you will buy that link with me. Let me put it that way. But we are told that it was this same chief priest and scribes that were plotting to kill Jesus. To kill Jesus. They were not plotting to demote him. They were not plotting to get him out of town. You know, there could have been other ways to do things if they felt that he's becoming a threat to them. But we are told that the motive here was clear. Kill Jesus. Right. Now we move Kill forward. Jesus. That's why this is a very unforgettable, <laughs> like the very words. unforgettable experience. Kill Jesus. Kill Jesus. That was the plot. That was the plan. It doesn't matter however they will achieve it. The goal is kill, kill Jesus. Jesus. Now they got a helper to it. You know, to actualize this plot, they got Judas his carrot, his carrot. And you know, many times it hurts you more when a family, when a friend betrays you. Mm -hmm. And someone you eat with, you sleep with, you trust with your life. It was Judas in this instance. It was an insider that they recruited to do the job. And he gave him to the whims of the scribes and the chief priest. And then, the tall story here. Before you leave that, yes, you were talking about people who are entrusted with this and that. Yes. Then they are the ones that want to kill Jesus. Yes. That even includes even Judas himself, yes. the closest. And that quickly took me to Micah chapter 7, verse 6. Okay. And I will just go to the last line. Right. Oh, I can read everything. He said, for the son dishonors his father. A daughter rises against her mother. A daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And the last line I want to use is this. A man's enemies are the members of his <laughs> own household. <laughs> so that is it. Yeah. If, if somebody is going to be brought down, yes. if you are unable to break the fence around him, you can't bring him down. That's right. So first of all, the enemy from inside must Indeed. have done the work. Yes. And this is what is happening here. A man's enemies are the members of his own mm -hmm. household. So it's been established. That's right. It's shocking, it's painful, it's disappointing, but that's life. Reality. That's why it's unforgettable. Even for Jesus. Mm -hmm. It was tough, even for Christ. You can imagine that. It was an inside job. Mm -hmm. To get this man killed, we have to get someone within. And while all of this were going on, all this plotting and planning, we are told that these religious leaders had a timing. They had a timeline. They had a plan, a, a time they want this thing to occur. Mm. But then it was the Passover time. They said, oh, if we do it this time, the uproar, the chaos will be too much because you see how religious people sometimes, yeah. and that's a lesson there for us. And they come down so that the Passover will, we'll go. Will go. <laughs> then they yeah, continue. They yeah, so in the midst of all of this, we saw Mary Magdalene. Mm. These are chief priests, the loyalists, the ones that should be the custodians of truth. These are the a scribes. This is Judas Iscariot, who is part and parcel, a disciple of Jesus. And now this is a third person here. Someone that should not 
in the realms of things have this kind of impact. This is someone that Jesus has casted seven demons wow. out of. If you look at uh, Mark 15, verse 40 through 41, and Luke 8, verse 1 through 3, you see the encounter. This is the same woman now whom returned to Jesus, and uh, she is being led by the Holy Spirit in the midst of this chaos, in the midst of this plotting, in the midst of this evil, she comes forward to do what? To anoint Jesus' head. And Jesus recognized that she's doing this towards his burial. You see that? The disciples, the disciple that is Judas, uh, the scribes and the chief priest are plotting something completely different and this woman returns out of gratitude, out of joy, and I will say, out of being led by the Holy Spirit to anoint Jesus. Yes. See, I see something here. Because we see how the Bible tells us that. Mary comes to anoint Jesus with a perfume that is worth a year's salary. Yes. The United States... We'll say that that perfume will be, a, a, if we go by minimum wage, yeah, 40, maybe $50,000 worth of perfume. Yes. And comes, breaks it, and empties it on Jesus' so head. <laughs> now, Judas was the treasure yes. that kept the little monies that disciples had. And the Bible tells us that usually Judas stole from them. Pressure. So, and he has been stealing little by little. And Judas, because he had had that in him, I want us to picture this too. He sees fifty thousand dollars <laughs> wasted. In quote, wasted. Yeah, wasted on Jesus' body, and it occurs to him that he could make this type of money for himself. <laughs> By betraying just because we see that it's like he has been nurturing this yeah, idea. Yes. idea for a long time. They have, they have sold this the, one, the idea to him. This one triggered him. It's like, so if we are wasting this kind of money, then what is stopping me from making Except this type of money deal. for myself? That's After right. all, he's able to save himself. That's mm -hmm. right. He can disappear. He can yeah, disappear he because he has done it before so when he, they, he when they was, dragged him. To the right. mountain to That's, kill him. Yes. He met everybody there. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. And he walked out of them. So J Judas knew that he could that Jesus could disappear. So he's like, okay, if we are wasting fifty thousand dollars like this, what is stopping me from this thing that the religious leaders has been asking me to do? I think it's time I made up my mind and make this money. This man can always disappear. Now, why I'm bringing this analysis is this. People come together to worship. While everybody is worshipping God, what is your motive at that time? Hmm. What are you thinking about? Are you thinking about... I watched one video a while ago of a, a, um, a woman that... He, she didn't know that people have noticed that whenever the offering plate passed her, instead of dropping the money she actually yes. took the money so people have noticed that that is what she does every church day so somebody already held her cell phone video waiting because she knew he was going to do it so immediately the offering plate passed her she dipped her money into the bag took her money and passed the plate so they cut her video as an evidence so i'm just giving that evidence that People come to worship God for different reasons. This woman came to worship God to steal offerings. Thank you. So, wait. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is a lot of things were happening at this time. Somebody was deeply in a relationship with God and was pouring out her heart of gratitude to God, to Jesus, for what he has done. While at the same moment, somebody else was thinking of how to make, make money, money of Jesus. Jesus. The question is, what are you thinking about worship? Is it how to do God's will or how to be used by the enemy? 
Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Quickly, before you go on, Pastor. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Um, if you look at the character of Jesus, yes. Some, you know, in the Bible, if you want to do evil, you have you will have a verse you can use. <laughs> if you want to do good, you will have a verse you can use. Yes. Somebody can use that place that evil Jesus, mm -hmm. evil Jesus knew when not to help the poor. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 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 Because right there, he said, you always have this yeah. poor yeah. yeah. Let me have this yeah. first. Yeah. Now, let's let's come to the reality here. Yes. Jesus knows that Jesus, our creator, knows our mind. Yes. Before you beginning and the end of what you are thinking, mm -hmm. before you concord it, he knows your motive. Mm -hmm. It's a bad motive here. Yes. Jesus could, could say, okay, that's true. Go sell it, give it to the poor. Mm -hmm. That's his own way. Yes. But in this case, he knew, he the, knew the motive they were not even of to those the passing that comment. That's right. You see, um, you can't deceive God. No. You can't play him. Yeah. You cannot hide under something and present it, so mm -hmm. hide black and present it as white. White is white, black is black, green is green, red is red. Before God, he knows the truth. Yes. What is behind whatever we do. Yeah, so those who pass that comment, they did it for their own benefit. Yes, they were not. And Jesus knew. That was why he was telling that you hypocrites, even though he didn't use that yeah. word, yes. you hypocrites. If you, if you had wanted to help the poor, you would have helped the poor. You don't need to and send this Even if when I go, you will have more, more than, than this. That's yes. right. Go okay. and use it to help people. Mm -hmm. Thank That's you. Right. So, two things I want to bring out here as we move forward in the lesson. The first, greed was the motive. Hmm. The lesson made mention that Judas betrayed Jesus and his motive was what? Great. Great. There are many people who are working in church today, different churches. I joke with this with one of my friends. Uh, and he said that a lot of people have called themselves to the ministry. <laughs> you know, God calls people. Now people call themselves <laughs> to the ministry. And you see a lot of people who call themselves to the ministry. The motive is money. Mm. Is we are here. You see, you have seen a lot of it in churches. It's so transactional. Once you take our money out of it, there's no that selflessness to serve God, to serve humanity. I mean, I'm not saying that ministers or those who work in the vineyard of God shouldn't be paid. They need to be paid. They need to be taken care of. But you discover that there is this evil spirit of money, greed, you see it even among our fellow ministers, opulence, wastages, things that are not in any way a defiant, even in dressing. You see some pastors are so, their appetite is so much tied to wearing certain brands of shoes, designer clothes, jewelries, and all of that. That is great. That's what we are talking about. You see some demanding, the Holy Spirit has told them that this Private jets need to be changed. These uh, uh, limousine need to be, you know, just wastages and things that are not in any way moving the gospel to those that really desperately need to hear the message of love and the message of forgiveness of Jesus. So let us be careful in that regard. What is our motive, just as Pastor Jen asked that question, for serving God, for ministry? What is our motive? In this case, Judas' motive was what? Money. Greed. It was money. It was stealing. And you see that in people performing fake miracles mm -hmm. today. A lot of things being done. Organize to miracles. Organize miracles, set it up just to attract and deceive a lot of good levels. A lot of people. People selling fake water and branding them that they, they do healing, they do all of this. So there's a lot of ways to look at many Judas Iscariot in the church today. And the other portion I wanted to bring out here is that Mary the Magdalene is the same woman that Jesus saved because she was being dragged by men. Apparently, some of these men had actually slept with her. And they were ready to stone her. And Jesus says, if there is any among you who have not seen, let him be the first to do what? To cast the stone. And they left one after the other. Mm -hmm. This is the same woman Jesus has casted seven demons away, 
this is a woman. So she is so grateful, grateful, in love with her Lord. She is genuine in her commitment to Jesus. She has left her old ways. She was a harlot, a, 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 in, in our modern times today, we will say an sex. escort professional or sex professional sex. trade uh, sex Walker. worker. She has been delivered of that demon in charge of that uh, trade, that work. And this one has genuinely repented and come back to Jesus. Mm -hmm. This is the same woman in this case that when they were plotting to kill Jesus, a lot of things were being played as she was genuine. Someone that the church people will say she shouldn't have. And I guess that's another reason why she was pouring the oil. They, they were very indignant. They were this like, sinner. this sinner. And Jesus allowed that to continue. So let us be careful with what we do. The Last Supper is something that is very crucial that followed this unforgettable event. Jesus was now setting up a new covenant. Uh, you know from Exodus 24, verse 8, what was the Passover, how the Passover was celebrated before Jesus set up this new way. So the bread here signifies Jesus' body. Mm -hmm. You can discover that the lamb was absent that ordinarily was part of this Passover, Passover celebration because Jesus is the Lamb. Jesus signifies the Lamb of the world that takes away the sin of the whole world. That is that Lamb that used to be killed during Passover. Now Jesus has set up a new system and the vine here, because they, they used to have in the Passover, they will have the Lamb, they will have the bread, and they will have the vine. The vine now represents Jesus Christ's shed blood of the new covenant. So it's, it's an, something very grand that many, ta many times we may take it a little for granted what Jesus' blood does for us. Uh, here is striking that in the Lord's Supper, which Jesus institutes, no use is made of the lamb of the Passover meal that, as we have established, is Jesus. Jesus represents the lamb. the lamb. The bread of the Lord is his body and the new covenant. That And then we see the shed blood. I just want to point out that many times in Holy Communion, we underplay the power that Jesus has made available in this symbol. I have seen people who believe with all their heart, and they attend this Holy Communion. They get their healing. Yes. They get permanent healing, and that's an appeal also to you. Maybe you're going through something in your body. Take the next time you take that Holy Communion, just say Jesus. It signifies your body. I know that this bread signifies your body. Challenge him with his own body. By your stripes we are healed. Because by his stripes you are healed. And he, our bodies are the temple of the living God. Mm -hmm. I have seen people that believe by faith. They drink that cup. Their life is changed because they keyed by faith into it. And I've seen people that took that bite. Even people who had dental issues. That they've been to all kind of dentists and nothing could be done just taking the bite a bite of that bread that symbolizes the body of jesus they got their permanent healing so uh, the good news here is that even though peter denied jesus and it's actually a little bit uh, funny how for three times he was arguing he was swearing with his life. He said, even every other person, I will not. And Jesus reminded him that even before the cock crew, that he would deny him. Uh, well, let us not, uh, because the way we always do this, let us not blame Peter too much. <laughs> as his human element mm. that took over him. But he was too strong. And he took over him even with an oath. You know, so all of us sometimes there are a lot of things 
uh, when the opportunity arises, we can really predict what we can do. But I also see that Peter was that kind of person that... He is, trusted in his strength. Yes, he trusted in his strength and uh, he was that kind of person that could easily switch <laughs> their sides. But later he became firm. But later, by the special grace of God, he was able to stand firm. So it's a good lesson for us and let us give Jesus a chance uh, and believe in the incredible gift he has shared with us, yes. Let us take a break. Stay with us. The Three Angels Media International, 3AMI, is a Christian media organization that creates multicultural and multiracial value-based inspirational contents and entertainment using innovative technology. We tell and share stories of hope that shape and mold character, challenge our audiences to schedule their priorities, heal, uplift, and restore. 3 AMI will enrich viewers and diverse populations and families through films, series, shows, comedies, romance, thrillers, documentaries, mission stories, music, faith-based sermons, health and lifestyle, and other media presentations, etc. to empower Adventist families and the Christian communities around the world to live on purpose while we wait for the second and soon return of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Subscribe to 3AMI at 3AMIFilms.com Subscribe also to 3AMI YouTube channel. Welcome back. We look at the section of this lesson that talks about Gethsemane and I would like to read it because when I was reading through it, it kind of touched me about how Jesus felt that at his time of need, he didn't get the help he needed. And I'm going to read from uh, Mark chapter 14, verse 32 to 42. It says, they went to the olive grove called Gethsemane. And Jesus said, sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, and he became deeply troubled and distressed. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little further and fell to the ground. He prayed that if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him, my passing by, Abba Father, he cried out, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet, I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned and found the disciples asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? <laughs> Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? It's like even you. <laughs> you know, that kind of. Yeah. Keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. It's weak. Then Jesus left them again and prayed the same prayer as before. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping. For they couldn't keep their eyes open. And they didn't know what to say. Yeah. When he returned to them the third time, he said, go ahead and sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> Have your rest. But no, the time has come. Mm. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, oh, let's be going. Look, my betrayer mm. is here. Yeah. When I read through this, studied the lesson, it broke my heart. In a different way, I saw it in a way that I've not really seen it before. One hour. Yeah. I just asked for one 
our support. Mm. Support. Yeah. And when I read through this, I started asking myself, Many a time that we want to pray and we find an excuse and slip off. I want to ask you a question. Well, possibly you've been to school as I've been. If you have an exam or an assignment that is due by a certain time and you're feeling sleepy, I can tell you that you will do everything possible to stay awake. Yes. That's, right. That's true. If it means putting your two feet in water, I think that. <laughs> <laughs> or chewing gum. If it means coffee, chewing cola nuts. Yeah. Or whatever. You would do because your professor will take no excuse. Yes. And like in my case, they had like a deadline maybe. It has to be submitted by 11.59. So, so time. So you would make sure it's submitted because after that, you are losing some mass, even if you got 100 percent, you will no longer get that because what I'm giving this illustration is this. These are earthly things yeah. that we make sacrifices for to make sure they are achieved. Jesus is asking you for one hour of prayer. One hour of prayer. And he's asking you this same question. Whatever your name is, Melissa, John, James, Matthew, whatever it is, Matthew, can't you just stay with me for one hour? I want you, in this section of this lesson, to ask yourself, what are you doing with your prayer life? Are you so busy taking care of the cares of this world? Taking care of your husband, your wife, your children, your boss, your job, every other thing, except having that hour of prayer with God. Jesus is asking you, can't you just watch for one hour with me? I need, I need to have that communion with you. And I want you to take that away from this section and pause and say, what am I doing about giving Jesus an hour of prayer every day? And also, let me add quickly, what kind of support system are you able to provide yes. to your friends and family? Because when they need you. When they need you. Because that's another thing here that I saw Jesus yearning yeah. for. Jesus yeah. is not asking for too much. Jesus is going through hardship. He was in his human, you know, uh, nature, humanity and divinity joined together. Jesus is facing hardship and he needs encouragement. Mm. He needed encouragement of his friends. Yes. I mean, there are times in your life that you just need a support system. system. Who among us will say, I don't need any support? Yeah. So let us be that hand and feet and leg that provides support to our friends, to the church, to the community, to our family members. Because I discovered that in our age and time, people are more in, on receiving end, mm. right? Yes. They want that something to giving. be done to them, but they are not willing to, they give. Are not willing to give. Yes, Zelda. I, I also wanted to Please. quickly say something about that. Just as we... Uh, advising people, make yes. sure you're supporting others. Yes. I also want to talk to all the strong ones among us yes. who think they can do all by themselves. That's right. One thing that Jesus Christ emphasized in that lesson is that you need support of your friends. That's right. Don't ever think you're an island who knows it all, who can depend all by yourself, yes. on yourself. Yes. Allow people to help you. Allow people to support you. In time of crisis, let people support you. Be willing to receive. Because not everybody is willing to receive help. Yes. For some reason, some people feel they are there. The help of others is not going to make a difference in their life. Yes. Don't let us be that kind of a person. Accept help from people. Trust in God, most importantly. And believe people will also be there for you as well. Amen. Thank you. Can we proceed by reading Mark 14, 43 to 52? 
And immediately, even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the twelve disciples, arrived with a crowd of men armed with socks and clubs. They had been sent by the leading priests, <laughs> the teachers of religious law and the elders. The traitor, Judas, had given them a pre-arranged signal. Mm. You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. Mm. <laughs> what a code. Yeah. <sighs> then you can take him away on the guard. As soon as they arrived, Jesus walked up to Jesus. Rabbi, he exclaimed, and gave him the kiss. Mm. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. But one of the men with Jesus pulled out his sword and struck the high priest's slave, slashing off his ear. Jesus asked them, Am I some dangerous revolutionary that you come with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there. I was there among you teaching every day. But these things are happening to fulfill what the scriptures say about me. Mm. And all the disciples deserted him and ran away. Oh. One young man following behind was clothed only in a long linen shirt. I told you he might have been armed. <laughs> <laughs> when the mob tried to grab him, he slipped out of his shirt and ran away naked. Okay, thank you very much. Just like making reference to where I read the other time, Mike, Micah mm -hmm. um, 7 6. Yes. The enemy of a man are the people Within of his own, own household. household. You know, Jesus Christ was a simple man, not dressing differently from his disciples. Mm -hmm. And so, if you are not an insider, you won't know who, yes. Jesus. Won't know who Jesus was yes. among them. Yes. So, they needed somebody yes. who they we say, this is Peter. And, <laughs> and so, you will see this man very close to him making a prearranged signal yes. with them that whoever I kiss. kiss. And in those days, among them, as the culture was, yes. you greet by. Yes. Kiss. 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 Yes. Give, greeting each other by brotherly, uh, brotherly love, love and kisses. Yes. So he did that and immediately they knew that was him. Now, this is it. How did Judah, before you can become a disciple of Jesus Christ, that means you have a, a kind of level of integrity, yes. a kind of level of trust that, that Jesus saw something in you to the point that you are not likely to be a betrayer. Mm -hmm. oh. But look at it. This is somebody just like Satan did against God yes. in heaven. Yes. Same scenario, repeating itself. Uh -huh. This one was not that he wanted to be greater than Jesus, but he wanted to sell Jesus to, to make money, money for his Monetary own gain. benefit. Yes. Now, that takes us to the character of Judas. Yes. You know, sometimes it doesn't matter how born again you are. Mm. Your nature yes. is still within you. Yes. Your carnal nature. The way you are born is way, and you have to struggle to overcome it. Yes. Judas must have had that little thing in him that is Love always money. want yeah. to steal. Yes. You see that the Bible never said that Judas was a fighter, mm -hmm. uh, a liar, an adulterer, or anything. But only one sin, yes. only one sin that he allowed in his oh. life yes. to overpower him. He was he became a slave to just one sin. Yes. And this is this is a warning to all of us. What is it in our life that we love most that we are becoming a slave, slave to? to? You don't have to be uh, sinners of many sins, like I don't know how Chief to say of sinners. Chief of <laughs> sinners. A single sin Same can destroy. It's just like you are wearing white cloth, yes. and there is just one dot yes. of black ink. Oh, yes. come on. That black ink will be what people will see there because it has ruined mm -hmm. the white. So Judas gave in to that one vice yes. in, in his life, yes. and it became his own mammon. Yes. It became his own God that he loved more than God, the actual living God. Yes. And he betrayed his mm -hmm. own master. So now... Uh, how does this align with fulfillment of the prophecy? Betrayer. That betrayer was already predicted. 
that somebody will have to give out Jesus. And he happened, the Bible did not say Judas, Judas or Joseph, or Matthew, or anybody. Mm -hmm. But um, Judas himself Just volunteered to himself yes. to be the person who will, who will do the, the bad work. Mm -hmm. So, some people argue differently. They say, oh, it was planned. God knew it. What if he didn't do it? If Judas did not do it, someone else would do it. Yes. So he chose himself. God did not choose him to be able to. God did not create him that way. Just as God did not create Satan as Satan, he was created as the morning star. Mm -hmm. So Judas chose to be the betrayer. And you see that when they came, God, Jesus said, ah, you've been seeing me in the synagogue. I've been preaching in the temple. Yes. You knew me to be the son of Joseph the carpenter. Mm -hmm. You didn't capture me then. Why you is it that what you could what some... you could have done in the open, you are now doing in the secret? In the, corner, mm -hmm. the dark. In the dark. Mm -hmm. When I was in Gethsemane praying, mm -hmm. why? It's because the fulfillment of prophecy must mm -hmm. come to pass. Right. Yes. Everything with God has its timing. Yes. And the timing must be very accurate. It never came to them to actually carry out the coup before that time. Mm -hmm. So that the gospel, I mean, mm -hmm. the prophecy may be fulfilled. Because Jesus Christ himself said, well, well, you did it so that uh, the prophecy may be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. May God not use us to fulfill a negative prophecy. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if there's any negative prophecy over our life, today it's removed in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's make ourselves available for positivity. Mm -hmm. Even if there is negative prophecy, you don't have to key into it, you don't have to walk into it, you don't have to be the one. But everything was actually happening according to prophecy. Yes. Now, coming down, you see that Peter caught somebody's ear. In that situation, a, 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 norm, a, a normal human being will say, oh, thank you. You are the one that you have my back. But Jesus said, no, I'm not leading a mob. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm not a talk. I'm not, I'm not one of those people by the roadside. But it's also surprising that Peter up until this point is still going around with his dagger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, why, why, why carry one? <laughs> <laughs> so Jesus Christ in his uh, wow. normal, normal character. Of Very peace. sharp. Yeah. Just one slash. The ear was off. Yes. You think the fight is the one that you need. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's because he still did not understand Jesus. Yeah, he was thinking of Jesus as a person. He has not been transformed. Yeah. yeah. So he didn't know, he did not totally understand the mission of Jesus, not the word that you find with a physical sword. Yes. Yeah. And Jesus had to, you know, do a quick surgery instantly and pull back the head. Jesus was still doing good in that circumstance. That's right. In that, that should have been enough for them to say, wow, this man, let's leave him. That's right. No. But no, their it. mind was made <laughs> up to carry out the evil they came for. And instantly after Jesus was taken, all his disciples disappeared. Not one was remaining, including Peter. He left. Yes. They, they, disappeared. they forsook him. And that's to tell us that everybody around Jesus was being arrested. Mm -hmm. And nobody wanted to be arrested. And now a man, an innocent man, <laughs> who was following, <laughs> was about to be captured. In fact, they captured him. He quickly removed, he removed his, his cloth, cloth. and, and went cloth. away naked. <laughs> naked. Naked. Right. All right. Now, I don't blame the man. I don't blame him because even though his decision was painful, he could have stayed with Jesus and followed Jesus all through. He could have left everything and followed Jesus, but he left everything and went away from Jesus naked. That was the opposite of what we expected. But he was being human because he was scared. He was scared of being captured, but it has its spiritual connotation. Yes. The spiritual connotation for us, for you, for me, all Christians, is that you know a Christian when the situation is not positive, mm. when it is not convenient to serve God, and you still remain, that's when you know a Christian. Mm. So if you are going to be a follower of Jesus Christ, don't expect it to be rosy. Yeah. Don't expect it to be a smooth road. Be ready to follow Jesus when it is least comfortable. Mm. The man should have waited and leave everything to follow Jesus to the end. That would have been a greater reward for him. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, he left everything and flee away from Jesus. May that not be our portion 
in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes Dr. thank Esther. you. Thank you so much. So we've been looking at all the events that led to Jesus Christ being taken. Like all kinds of, they were like trying to take him. Everybody that helped to make it possible. Judas Iscariot betraying mm -hmm. Jesus by kissing him, giving all those quotes. And eventually they arrested him. He was taken. Uh, let's read the book of Mark chapter 14. We'll start from verse 60. To 72. I want us to read it so that we just understand completely what happened. You know? Then the high priest, okay, okay. Thank God. Yes, sir, please. Then Go the ahead. high priest stood up mm -hmm. before them and asked Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the son of the Blessed One? Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Almighty One, and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses? Mm -hmm. He asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists, and said, Prophesy! Prophesy! And the guards took him and beat him. Hmm. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant's girls of the high priest came back. When she saw Peter warming, warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with the Nazarene, Jesus, she said, but he denied it. I don't know this man. I don't know or understand what you are talking, talking about. about. He said, and went out into the entryway. When the servant guest saw him there, he said, she said again to those standing around, this fellow is one of them. <laughs> again, he denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call them curses. <laughs> and he swore to them, I don't know this man you are talking about. Immediately, the rooster crowd the second time. Then Peter remembered the word of Jesus that he had spoken to him before the rooster crows twice, yes. he disowned me three, three times. times, and he broke down the wet. Wow, two stories yes. intertwined yes. one confirming yes. the Lord Jesus Christ, the other one denying his lordship. Yes. Who are you? Jesus Christ was asking, Who are you? You know. It's surprising that they are even asking Jesus who he is. They already that's why they that's why they take him, right? That's why he was taken. Mm -hmm. So they're now asking, they want him to confirm with them if he is truly uh the son of God, if he is the Messiah they are talking about. And now Jesus Christ said it. He clearly told them that I am the Messiah, the Son of God. He had to declare that. Because it was time for him to do so. But on the other hand, what's why that is going on in the court? On the other hand, what's going on outside? Somebody's denying Somebody. <laughs> Remember Peter. Peter said, I will be with you. I will stand with you throughout <laughs> all of it. He was promising Jesus that he was going to be right there with him. Jesus said, oh, you're going to deny me. And Peter said, no, nope, no, me. I ain't never going to do that. I have my sword. Yes. I will kill everybody. Remember, <laughs> you see, sometimes it's so funny. See how Peter was trying so much to defend Jesus. He was ready to cut someone's ears off just because of Jesus. And when the time came for the prophecy to be fulfilled, yes. what happened? He fell right through it. I was wondering, is there a way Peter could have gone out of this? Is there a way this could not have happened? It was a prophecy. I'm like, could Peter have done something else different? Jesus, for that prophecy, Jesus knew nothing? Peter and his capabilities and capacity, and Jesus saw through him that stability 
that maturity was never there. But I'm still surprised that Jesus still called him, Jesus still used him, Jesus still loved him. Mm. So sometimes we don't need to count people off mm. because of their weaknesses. God can make use of even the most weakest person. Jesus saw through Peter and knew that this is his character. Hmm. Peter is an unstable fellow. He can promise you something like him to eat. That was his own weakness as a human being. And for me, it's, it's not really that it's a prophecy must come to pass, but it's because of that his human nature, that his weakness, let me point it like that, that hypocritical. You remember Peter saw uh, James eating with... Uh, the Pharisees, and he quickly, uh, it, it was actually James, this story, he quickly wanted to persuade them. He wanted to, he wanted to like show them like, oh, I'm not with these people. Mm. And James had to scold him, you know, that mm. behavior. <laughs> yes, that is yes. So uh, I, I, I was also thinking that in denying Jesus, according to this lesson, Peter demonstrated that Jesus is the Messiah. Yes. He demonstrated that in the sense that, you know, the Messiah had told him that this is going to happen. I think it was at that point that he realized that, yeah, for real, Jesus is the Messiah. He is the Son because of what, God. what he it, said came to yeah, pass. Yeah, it came yes. to pass. And then it's, he began to cry. That's at right. that point, he began to cry. So, and then... Uh, it, it, it made him realize that, oh, I've been doing this wrongly. So, you know how we were talking about maybe he has not really had a full encounter. He has not really been totally converted. He still had to take a sword with him wherever he goes. But now, at this time, he actually had to cry. Because he came, yes, yes. he came to that I realization. Really yes. Yes. yes, yes, yes. And that's so, the difference between Peter and, and Judas. Judas. And Judas. Yes. Both of them sinned against Jesus. That's right. But instead of Judas repenting, he went to hang himself. Why Peter came back to, to, his, to his master. Yes. Okay, so it's just an encouragement for all of us, true. Um, sometimes we're trying to follow Jesus, but we fail at times to do so. Yes. Don't let us... a lot. Yeah. We're gonna. It's, it's an experience that is gonna happen to us. But the power for us to depend on Christ, depend on God at all times. It's it, it. That's where the power lies. Depending on God in all of our trials. You know, we've been trying to keep on track with the Lord, but something is just gonna come your way that makes you deviate a little. Yes. Go back to God. Amen. Go back to God. Come to that realization. Remember who you are. And then stay with God, and then you will be fine by doing so. And Amen. God is full of forgiveness. Yes. God forgave God. Peter. Don't always forget that part. Many times, that's where we as human beings think we have seen it all. This one, what I've done, there's no way. No. God's plans are different, His ways are different. God is full of forgiveness and mercy. Peter did something unthinkable. You know what that means? <laughs> Lashing out to everybody, cursing them out, like, I don't know this man. Wow. <laughs> Jesus' love is so powerful that he still, he took Peter back. And he preached, and 3,000 were converted Peter, with him. At once. And he was, he, he, he was so used that when, when people took, took handkerchief from him, they, he, and he, he commanded the lame man. The same Peter. The same Peter. was killing people. Saint Peter. That was that was a great let transformation. Us, let us uh, right. sing the last two services of our song three one seven.
Esther, close us in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Father, we are just so grateful for the opportunity you have given us to learn from your words. The grace for us to totally depend on you in times of trials, in times of temptation. Father, grant us real such power in Jesus. The These words we are studying help us that it will help us in building our Christian lives and we will always stand with Jesus in all situations. Yes. We just thank you, Lord, for blessing us and for blessing our audience with this lesson this day. We pray your blessing will remain with each and every one of us. And when you shall come the second time, may we be among those that will reign eternally with you, dear Lord Jesus. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much for this wonderful time we have spent together in the study and discussion of the Word of God. We pray that this was we have some impact in your life. Whatever being the case, remember that Jesus loves you and that soon and very soon He's he coming. will be here He's to coming. receive you. He is coming. Until then, keep trusting. God bless. <laughs>